again, it's Lock Noob, and in my latest series of uh, videos, you'll see me pick a lot of American locks and American lock clones. One thing I haven't done is really focus on how do those padlocks work, and how do you really go about defeating all of those serrated key pins and serrated drive pins and serrated spool driver pins? Well, in front of me is a Series 20 American lock, and this is um, a really good example of the type of lock I'm talking about. It has fully serrated key pins and fully serrated driver pins. It's also got the standard ball bearing mechanism and a sprung core. So this video is about showing you how this type of padlock works and how to go about picking serrated uh, driver pins and key pins and serrated spool drivers. How do I go about that? Well, I could show you how to do it in this lock, but I'd be describing what I'm doing. That isn't very useful to learn from. Now, this lock is Pete Restall's. Pete Restall has his own YouTube channel and he lent it to me and um, please go check out his channel. He's an excellent picker. But one, another thing that he lent me is this cutaway lock. This is a cutaway by somebody called Lockcracker and it really is a thing of beauty. If I line the locks up, you can see how uh, this is another Series 20 just cut away, and it really is just gorgeous. It really is gorgeous. So let's have a look first about how this type of padlock works. There are many types of padlock that use ball bearing mechanisms with sprung cores, and have a, and, and ones which actually have a, a removable um, cylinder inside. So, first of all, let's have a look at uh, this key works as standard, it's five pins. The core is actually six pins, but it's pinned up to five. That's normal for um, American locks. If you put the key in, you can see that the uh, angle tip pushes the pins out of the way, the key pins out of the way, allowing the whole lock to be inserted. Because it's the right key, all of those pins are lined up with the shear line. You can see that I've broken the um, key pins away from the driver pins at the shear line there. So that's one thing. How does the actual un uh, mechanism here work where you're unlocking the lock? Well, in a standard padlock, you have an actuator directly acting on locking poles which are attracted from notches in the shackle. Downside to that kind of mechanism is it is susceptible to a shimming technique where you push a piece of metal down the side of the shackle, forcing the locking poles back against the, um, the sprung-loaded mechanism inside. You cannot do that in these locks. These ball bearings sit um, between the actuator and a notch in the shackle. You cannot move the shackle because the ball bearings cannot be pushed out of the way. They also cannot be shimmed, therefore. If you turn the core, you'll see that this little cup on the actuator moves around and the ball bearings can drop into it. You'll also see if I let go of the key, it springs back. Um, so here we go. If I turn it, I'll just put my finger here so I, um, I, I stop it from springing out too violently. And you see the ball bearings drop in and the spring on the shackle should force the shackle up. There we go, and it's open. You can also see that um, you see the bottom, or the top I should say, <laughs> of the key pins there. Okay, let's close that back up. Oh, actually you can also see exposed here the screw which actually um, uh, goes all the way down to the um, retaining plate here and will allow you to take the, the core out, um, the cylinder out at the bottom. Okay, so let's close that back up nicely and um, we'll talk about how we go about um, uh, exploiting the keyway here to pick this type of lock. Let's go back to uh, Pete's original Series 20. So there's a couple of design features here which will uh, allow us to get into these locks a bit easier. Instead of using bottom of the keyway tensioning away from the pins, you can use top of the keyway tensioning. This nice non paracentric keyway allows you to put in a tension bar up here or a pry bar and allow you clockwise tensioning um, and quite a nice fit with a Mad Bob's 1.2 millimeter pry bar there. You can also uh, exploit then the non paracentric keyway by putting a medium style hook or gem hook in there. You'll notice in a lot of my videos I use a Peterson's German 18,000th. Well, I can introduce something a little better than that today. Please check out this 
absolutely beautiful um, handmade stainless steel and laminated brass um, gem style pick. This um, is from a friend in New Zealand, uh, Tipene. Um, and he is a, an absolute craftsman, I have to say. And just look at how beautifully made um, and how precision made this pick is. Now, he knows that I like to use um, Peterson's gems in 18 thousandths for this type of keyway. And he made me a, um, a, a beautifully shiny. I mean, this is polished to the nth degree. You really can't appreciate it on camera. I wish you could see what I can see. Um, but he made me this uh, in 20 thousandths, which is perfect, as you'll see, for going in here, down the keyway, and, and, and be able to use the full height of that keyway. Okay. So, I cannot think of a better way to show off um, how to pick serrated driver pins, both spooled and, other, and standard, um, using um, Lock Cracker's beautiful cutaway, and... Um, to Penne's uh, absolutely beautiful gem hook all the way from New Zealand. Okay, so let me uh, get that bit closer. Let's fix the autofocus on the lock. And let me uh, talk you through how I go about picking these types of pins. Um, I've only recently got more confident with this type of pin because they are tricky to begin with. You need really light tension to begin uh, for a start uh, and, and as a beginner that can be quite tricky to 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 um, sort of get a feel for but I'm just going to hold it in with the tip of my thumb with very little tension on this at all you can see how, how little um, I'm pressing on there why do I need very little tension well each serration here you should be able to feel a click as you go past each serration you should just feel that as you go through okay um, you should also uh, uh, feel when you reach a shear line and that will feel ever so different to the feeling of the serration moving past the shear line. You will not feel the difference if you don't use light tension and you may end up um, binding the, the core on these serrations which is sort of what they're designed to do, they're anti-pick measures. When um, there's a spool at the shear line and this one as you can see is, if you pick depending on the binding order, if you pick the um, all the standard serrated first, it will turn and um, slightly more into a false set on those spools. Whether we get that or not um, depends entirely on the binding order of the pins. So let's go on in. Remember, light tension. Aim is to go through the pins one by one, finding a binder. Pressing down, if you hear a click, stop, move on, down the stack to find another binder. Reason being is because what can happen is if you overdo each pin, you can move past the serrations on the driver pin and end up pushing the, I'll show you, the, um, on pin one, you can end up pushing the key pin down past the shear line and because of the serrations on the key pin, that will bind up in the lock too. All you can do then is let go of the tension and allow it to slip back. That's why you have to go pin to pin gently as you can, listening as nicely as you can for those clicks and feeling them. The core will move when you hit the shear line. So let's go through. Okay, we're on five. Seems solid. Moving on. Uh, four. Click. I'm moving on. I've got a nice click. Three. Um, doesn't seem, seems to be okay. I, I, it seems to be sp springy. I don't want to move, move it down. Two seems okay. Um, at least, oh, I've got a little click off two. One little click, I'm moving back, okay, because I heard a click, I'm moving back. So I look at five, nothing, four, solid now, it's not springy. Three, still springy. Two, not springy at all. One. Another click, move back. Uh, five, doesn't want to go anywhere. Needs four, three, two, and let's try one again. Little click, okay. 
let's try. Uh, oh, I think we've dropped one. So look at five. Oh, little click on five, four, three is fine. Two, and let's go back to one. And we heard that last click, and you can see that we're at the shear line now. I'm just going to put a finger here so that I don't slip my tension and just move up and see that we picked it. Here we go. Now it turns out that those spools didn't come into play because um, the binding order was such um, that they they had to be picked before um, the last standard serrated so we didn't have to fall into a false set. So if I had to sum that up it is exploit the keyway on these American uh, locks by using top of the keyway tension. Use uh, the full height of the keyway to um, to pick. Use very light tension and listen and feel for the clicks on the serrations. You'll hear usually a larger click and feel a little core movement when you hit shear. If you get to a, a little click on the key pins, move on, try and find another binder. You can always come back. Don't over um, set any of the driver pins by staying on a pin too much because you'll just bind up the serrations on the key pins and then you might need to reset. So I hope you found that um, instructive. I really enjoyed showing you um, this beautiful Series 20 cutaway from Lockcracker lent to me by Pete Restall. Um, so a thank you to Pete Restall for the lend. Um, I'm ever so grateful. And just to show off this um, uh, pick, only because I just want to make you jealous, genuinely, um, because you should be. This is a beautiful pick all the way from New Zealand to the UK, uh, uh, made by a true craftsman to Penne, and a thank you to him too. Okay, I'll see you next time.